please welcome on stage Carmen Delgado on how contribution programs benefit mentors and participants. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for staying here and arrive until my talk. I hope this is as useful as I thought when I proposed this for folks backstage. I'm Carmen Delgado. I'm an adoption community manager. I'm also, on my free time, uh, a mentor and organizer of a volunteer program for women in tech. And my new and not least role is I'm a full-time mom. <laughs> And this is my handle, and welcome to my talk. Um, so first, and not least, we have been here, at least for me, around talking and talking and meeting people and everything. So a little bit of trash. I know this is a tough audience, and we are in Europe. I say because I have Venezuelan, so, but a little bit of stretch will be helpful. Stand up, stretch yourself. I, we should do this every two hours. I don't do it because I am a mom, so every two hours I see my baby. And what should I, try, I try to do is some yoga, some exercises. And this is helpful because I have a bit of stay fresh, but I'm okay now. Now that you see you're with me, I'm better now. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is what I'm going to explain. What are new, actually, new contributors program is my main focus, more than general contribution programs. Um, what are the benefits? How to participate on, on them? And why Cliff Foundation and what is adoption? I've, I have heard about Cliff Foundation the full day, so I'm, most of the people know what is it. <laughs> I'm glad about it. Uh, what is a new contributor program? Uh, for, before I start talking and talking, I want to keep you to keep in mind this sentence. The essence of open source is the value of collaborating with new contributors who bring diversity of experience and a world view. And this is the reason why getting new contributors to your program and also the diverse people is important. So most of these program goals are based on diversity and inclusion and equity, and that's why we need be, why they focus on that because of the demography, demography of tech industry, <laughs> and also on force that all, less than eight percent of contributors are women. This is from two years ago, three already, <laughs> and only eighty. 38% of high-tech workforce are rice di rice diverse. F foster it also helps to foster collaboration from different regions and backgrounds, and create a supported environment. And we need to be aware that when you create a supported environment, you are helping people to to highlight, to um, to you empower them. You give them the opportunity to talk, to bring that diversity. And, and that different way of thinking to your community because they feel support by their leadership. Other program goals is reduce fragmentation and promote effective collaboration. We know we want to work on a decentralized environment, but talking about uh, technology and resources that at the end it costs a lot of money, having people working together from big and small projects, from big and small companies, from different backgrounds and universities of uh, tech, tech uh, backgrounds is super efficient and it helps for budget allocation and different resources. Develop inclusive processes from decision making is the same. It takes into account different perspectives and people's needs. Uh, from different regions and backgrounds, promote cultural collaboration and inclusivity, and find a common ground for everyone to talk. Because when you are part of an open source project, is all the base are set in a proper way. Everyone can participate. It's open to everyone to collaborate, and you, you don't be to be like, oh, you are only a student. You can talk with the head of everything in technology in X company. I mean, the round is the same for everyone. Some programs, examples that both Eclipse Foundation and Adotia have been part of. One is Avrici, is focused on socially disadvantaged people. This, all of these at paid internship. This is a three-month program. 
It had had more than a thousand participants, and Adoption had been part of it, funded by both Red Hat and Equi Foundation. Uh, as a project, you need to find some company that sponsored your participation and you enter to propose an idea. The, the other, I think everyone knows, is the Google Summer of Code. It had more than 19 years. It, it's not focused on a specific disadvantaged people. It's more about bringing new contributors to open source. It's a 12-week program. It pays as an individual contributor. It's not an employee or an intern, etc. It's like a freelance mother. And in this case, all the projects are organized and submitted under uh, a specific organization. In our case, it's through uh, Eclipse Foundation, create a list of ideas. They, pro they send the proposal on behalf of all the projects we had. And then it's, it's like a match of participants and projects. Canospi, this is a, a Canadian university program, is the, inter, the necessary interest for tech uh, students. It has two cohorts. And then the last one we have tried at, at Adoption, and it went very well because mentors feel like they can focus all the effort on this new person. Is that Paint Inter, sponsored by a company that actually was sponsored by Mercedes-Benz Innovation Hub. And the recruiting and in, an intern agreement is managed by the company, but the mentorship and the program is created and is hosted by the community members. Benefits. So I already mentioned some of the goals. So let's go through the benefits for both the program and the participants and, and common benefits in general. General benefits. Diverse perspective equals better final solution, which promotes diversity, equity, and inclusion. Create a cultural support. I already mentioned that, that when you make a space where new voices can be heard and you can benefit from their ideas, their, creati their creativity, their energy, they bring new suggestions, and they also feel supported, and they get more productive and more involved in the project. Develop communication their practices for everyone. Uh, in our case, at least for Eclipse and Adoption projects, most of our uh, contributors are from all over the world. So we need to work in a global environment. We need to communicate through remote technologies and tools. We need to know how to improve our great communication because we work a lot of asynchronous and across time zones. In my case, I work with five time zones every day. Uh, build skills for both. Uh, you can get uh, the new mentors and contributors to grow the technical and communication skills and participate, uh, improve, and everyone get benefit from it. Benefits for participants, introduction into the open source development pro world. If they have the opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one with maintainers and leaders, project leaders, uh, they create that relationship with their mentors because as, as a new contributor program and, and a new contributor to open source, sometimes you can feel overwhelmed. And this idea of this safe environment helps them to feel comfortable as part of the of the project and the team. Generate direct link with project leaders and managers. Uh, at the beginning of the, the idea of these projects and a way to set everything up is like at the beginning of the project when you're creating the proposal to get this new, mem new contributors program, uh, you need to set who will be your mentors and this same person will be in charge of the application part on preparing the, the project idea so they will be very involved with the final new contributors or the final people that get into the project. Um, develop technical and communication skills for everyone. Uh, technical skills, some of them are, are new technologies they're using. They are going to work for pro with production environments sometimes that they're not used to. Um, being able to communicate clearly and open because they need to use like Git repository, Slack, uh, Slack communication, create documentation before making a decision and starting implementation and both parties to be very clear on how to communicate. 
a SPAM professional network, not only with the, the mentors and the other uh, community contributors, also with other people that are on the same position as new contributors. It could be from a university, from different backgrounds, from different programs, and experience working in a distributed environment that I already explained that a lot. <laughs> These are some of our participant experience. As you can see, I haven't pushed them to write this. <laughs> Actually, what I, I, we always ask is to do a, a closer uh, blog post of how they feel they, they, they felt during their internship because of the visibility for them and for, for the program. As you can see, they say they feel a full, part, full member of the community, uh, they had the opportunity to get code reviews, a slight discussion, being part of the weekly meetings, and also they be able to gain hands-on experience with the platform, with the technologies, with the mentors, and, and everything. So some benefits for the project size. Now we're going to do check what the projects get from that, because I'm saying like a lot of, you need a mentor, you need time, you need documentation, but that's also good things for projects because it's a healthy thing to review all your processes and all the documentation. You get new and diverse contributors. Uh, during different talks today, you have been there, the, the, the word of sustainability was an important part, and that's why you need to, you need to bring new people to your project because you need to project to continue for them that from the founders of the, that idea. And usually these new contributors are very keen with the project and they stay longer than the program and they continue collaborating maybe on the free time or they find a way to be paid to be part of the project. Um, the project also get uh, at the opportunity to have fresh minds that bring different perspectives, needs, and it allows to update the documentation at, according to the new, new point of view, continuous and active development, uh, adding new innovation and development process and thanks to these new cohorts and people that are getting involved into the project. Increase community awareness, and uh, this is an important part of any open source project that you have seen in also in other talks, that you need to get more people involved, uh, spread the word about what are you doing, create lighting talks, blog posts, content. Um, they also explain externally if they feel welcome in the project and they feel they learn a lot, they will explain to other people, hey, apply to this program, it's for real, they're going to pay you, you're going to be selected, it's not a, it's not a myth, it's a real thing that it will happen. And community give back, uh, I say, uh, you can feel that you are bringing the community and enable, enable project continu continuity. And community safe evaluation, this is an important part. It's a good moment for the community to evaluate their full uh, process because usually when you start a project and when you are being in that project for one, two, three, five, ten years, you know everything in your head and this is a good time to stop, review the documentation, review your expectation, create a plan, objectives and follow and see if these are suitable if you, ha if you have an easy way to communicate with new people that are part of the project, um, and if you have good for issues, and etc. So how to participate? As a project, the most important thing to participate to this program is break the open source stigma. There is a, a, some of the project, at least for the big ones, there is a stigma that you need to be super good, super known, to be part of it. So you, one thing you need to know is to designate a mentor. I say this mentor, it should be the same person that will, uh, that will be with the new contributor to the entire program. This person needs, these people need to have a mindset of there is no stupid question. Uh, they need to be good at communication and openness, at contribution, at reviewing document, giving feedback, and etc. Generate a list of good first issues. Actually, if you go to both GitLab and GitHub and you find search for this tag, you will find a lot of good first issues from different projects. But internally, as a technical community, you need to decide what you consider will be a good first issue and establish those parameters to follow by the community. 
create a getting started documentation for first time contributors, explaining the architecture of the project, all the project dependencies, structures, repositories, code of conduct, how to contribute, etc. Improve the documentations to make contributors familiar, have a contribution plan that includes expectations, timelines, and how to get feedback, set the project expectation, keep in mind the level of the new contributors and work on that. And one important part, if get a good and open feedback all the time. No, don't, do not wait until the end of the program to say, hey, your performance was not so good, so okay, bye. No, so use that time for the people to improve and also you to as a project manager to be better with your project. Is this is a general how to get involved? Check each program uh, website. They have a lot of information, timeline, how to. It's super easy to be part of those programs. Um, as a participant, follow the projects you're, you want to be part of. Do not wait until the program is up. Follow those projects from last year, do some research, go to the good for issues and start contributing if you can. As an organization, follow program requirements. They're very easy and very well explained. And prepare your project proposal. And maybe you will need to have some time to be part of the applicant selection. And at the end, be part of the program and enjoy the ride because it's very grateful to be there. Um, just uh, what is a Cliff Foundation? <laughs> Most of you already know, uh, this year we're celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Cliff Foundation. We are more than just the Cliff's ID. We are a governance entity that help for vendor neutrality are commercially friendly. We, have, we offer governance and stewardship, IP management, community development and participation, branding and marketing, event attendance, community events, infrastructure and security. And the supply chain part is very important since two years ago. And also fundraising and ecosystem development for your project. So the goal of having a, a foundation on, on the back of your project is to get the tech team dedicated to improve the technical part and leave the foundation with all the legal finance and the supporting part of the project. Adoption is a stand for both the working group that is the governance and the top level project. And our mission is to work around Java runtimes and associated technology and to give that to the community and to the Java ecosystem in general. Um, some numbers about Adoption. Since uh, there is this before, with, uh, since 2017, with Adopt OpenJDK, but these numbers, downloads, accumulative numbers, as, as since they are part of the Cliff Foundation uh, four years ago. Uh, they are, they are part of the security supply chain. They have achieved Salsa Build L3. They are working with 80 active contributors, and we have 11, 12 member, active members that are helping the project. These are funding members, but we also have uh, some sponsorship programs with a lot of company behind. Um, when I say that you, are the chance, you have the chance to talk with uh, these uh, maintainers, I'm not talking about any company. You can have people from, these are some of the mentors. Actually, Shelly Lambert helped a lot with this presentation. Uh, you can work with people from Red Hat, IBM, uh, other companies, Alibaba. Uh, we have now Canonical and, and other members, and also from other associations from the technology you're interested of. And if you want to go and do some research about more mentors, you can check on the links. And that is, I'm done <laughs> on time. So <laughs> thank you. If you want to know more about me, this is my handles, the Adoption and the Cliff Foundation. <laughs> Thanks, Carmen. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So any questions for Carmen? Hi, I, I really appreciate how you highlighted um, programs that also compensate the contributors, the mm -hmm. new contributors. Um, in any of the programs that you listed, also the ones that you modeled, did you go from a um, no pay model to a pay model? I'm trying to navigate that experience right now and I'm trying to figure out where the money's supposed to come from. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think the hard part is, as I say, when you apply to this program, I mean, Google Summer of Code is different because they already have the system and it's Google Summer of Code, but usually when, with small programs, you need to find a sponsor that is able to fund to fund that person to be part of your program. That's, so it's hard. You usually go to your mentors, uh, I mean, to your members, uh, to a company that you know that want to help, but it can be like an active uh, member. So you offer them, hey, can you help me by a sponsor, like one time sponsorship to cover this. So yes, when when you, uh, uh, we think that a paying uh, contribution is a better approach to keep people like, because we're using their time, their knowledge and everything. But it's part of the process to find that <laughs> that money in the meantime, yes. Heard. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Carmen. Awesome. And thanks for the exercise. I think everybody <laughs> needs that. <laughs> and uh, a big hand for Carmen. Thank you.